Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I'm Theo and in this video I wanted to talk about the 2025 Toyota 4Runner because I think it is a vehicle that is going to change the game when it comes to off-roaders. I have created a list of a few things I want to cover in this video which will be also included right next to me. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Now the first point is that the 4Runner, the Land Cruiser and the Tacoma are all based on Toyota's TNGA platform. So this means that the new 4Runner is still a body on frame vehicle. So we have a separate chassis and a body that sits on top, a solid rear axle and independent double wishbone front suspension. This is the way Toyota has been doing the design of their rugged off-roaders since the early 1990s, pretty much since the vehicle behind me uh, right here. This, is, this was one of the first vehicles to use the double wishbone front suspension and the solid rear axle. This is a 90 series Land Cruiser Prado. So this is where it all started. But in any case, we have uh, the TNGA platform and higher trim levels have a rear diff lock, a sway bar disconnect, multi-terrain select and crawl control. These are amazing features for off-roading. The rear locker uh, will provide the grip needed in very difficult situations. The front sway bar disconnect will enable the front wheels to articulate more through uneven terrain, which will keep wheels in contact with the ground for longer and will make the car feel more stable off-road, but it will also help it grip better. Multi-terrain select is pretty much Toyota's off-road traction control system and crawl control as I'm sure you probably know, is something like an off-road cruise control. The vehicle will accelerate and apply the brakes as necessary to ensure you get over the terrain you're trying to drive over. What is most interesting about the way Toyota has done things is that top trim levels that have all these off-road features are also really luxurious. So on the inside we have great materials, we have options like heated and cooled seats, memory seats, an amazing dashboard design, a big infotainment system, there is nothing really missing from the interior of that vehicle, which is why I sort of uh, mentioned in the beginning that it reminds me of a blend between Land Rover and Toyota because Land Rover always did interiors amazingly. Vehicles had all the options, but also the design of the interiors was amazing. But Land Rovers lacked the body on frame design, the solid rear axle, and the uh, modifiability and adaptability of other vehicles such as the Toyotas. Now the 4Runner seems to have taken a bit of a Land Rover route when it comes to the interior, but it has kept the rugged underpinnings that make Toyota vehicles great. So in my opinion, that is a, a very good combination. And it definitely is one of the reasons uh, why I believe the new 4Runner will be a game changer. Another area where Toyota trucks uh, were left behind when compared to other brands such as Land Rovers was the engine compartment. And obviously I do not mean that they were left lacking in terms of reliability. They were left behind in terms of power and drivability. The old 4 liter V6 in the 4Runner and the 5 speed transmission on the previous generation was indestructible. It was an amazing combination. However, it was definitely very slow and definitely outdated. The new model of 4Runner comes with a 2.4 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder in the base models and on the higher trim levels like the Trail Hunter and the TRD Pro we also get a hybrid system combined with the 2.4 liter. The 2.4 liter on its own produces 278 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque and it is mated to an 8 speed automatic transmission. With the hybrid system that power goes up to 326 horsepower and 476 pound feet of torque. So it is quite a big upgrade and uh, it is safe to say that the new 4Runner will be much more drivable and much more comfortable on the road than the previous generation. Of course the power upgrade also means that the uh, new generation will be better at towing. The new tow rating is roughly 6,000 pounds which is about 1,000 pounds more than the old model. 
What is also nice to see is that Toyota has sort of kept the spirit of the Forerunner alive. If you see the new model driving on the street, you will probably guess that it is a Forerunner simply by looking at it. The side profile is very similar to the old one. The rear end and the front end are also similar but updated and a bit more aggressive. And we still have the sliding rear window, which is a big plus. It has been on Forerunners for decades and it is a staple of the model. So it is a great thing that Toyota managed to keep that back there. The Forerunner in general sort of has a more youthful look to it uh, when compared to the Land Cruiser. They are based on the same chassis. The new Land Cruiser is a bit more grown up, but the Forerunner has remained more youthful and let's say aimed towards a lifestyle niche people who perhaps enjoy the outdoors who enjoy outdoor sports off-roading overlanding and this kind of stuff what i also wanted to mention was that uh, while the new forerunner on paper seems to be a great vehicle there might be a small issue one of the biggest selling points of the forerunner was simply the fact that it was indestructible and uh, its reliability was mostly down to its engine and transmission combination. The new engine, although we can't say for sure as of now because it, it is still relatively new, seems to be much more complicated than the old one. The turbo, the fact that it is a small four-cylinder that makes a lot of power, and simply just by having a look at the engine bay and how cramped and complicated everything looks, suggests that the new drivetrain might not be as reliable as the old one especially if you add the hybrid system on top there's some detailed information on the slides right next to me if you want to uh, dive a bit deeper onto the specs of the engine and and hybrid system but to put it simply the hybrid system will sit between the engine and the transmission it is an electric motor that aids the engine pretty much so you don't have any motors on the axles and this kind of stuff thankfully no cvt as well uh, because that would have been a disaster on the forerunner the batteries of the hybrid system sit under the uh, second row seats and they have a fan for cooling that fan should stay clear from any objects and dust or dirt and should always be checked to ensure that the batteries last for as long as possible but yeah that is my main concern with the new forerunner that the new and much more complicated but more drivable drivetrain might not be as reliable as the old one. That being said, if there is one company that can make a reliable turbo four-cylinder paired to a hybrid system, it is Toyota. They have proved it many times before. So fingers crossed, the Forerunner stays bulletproof. And if it does so, I'm pretty sure that Toyota is going to sell a lot of them because it seems like an amazing car. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.